well, let's talk about this love the genius and we'll get up out of here, man. Um, because we started talking about it. What were some of your favorite songs on here? I love it, Mike. She's brilliant. I think so too. Mike, I think brilliant. that I think Conway has a gold mine here, man. And I, I don't mean that in like, you know, monetary terms. I just think just a brilliant artist that can do a lot of things and that can really, really spit. And it needs to get a lot more attention out here. That's why I want to she's talk working, about. man. Like she's she's out about. here in the booth. She's doing she's the freestyles. I don't know. Uh, let me ask you this: What do you think that? What What do you think will break through uh, a lot of that? You know, for for love, is it a feature? No, we we need to start. Okay, so <clears throat> Lauren Hill was obviously appealing to the eye, but man, she was skilled in the motherfucker. Okay. Love is beautiful, by the way. But, man, she's skilled. She's nice. And people need to start talking about her the way that she asks to be talked about, which is has an MC and not a female MC. Because to just call her a female MC is to disrespect what she is bringing to the table in totality of what she does. Mike, she can rap over a hardcore beat, rap over a jazz-inspired beat, rap over a soft beat. She can sing your hook. She can yeah. rap your yeah. hook. Bar-wise, she's fluid. Nothing that she cannot do. Subject matter-wise, Mike, she's as versatile a female as we have had. And that, and when I, this is what I'm about to say. Her versatility in terms of subject matter supersedes Lauren because Lauren won't say some of the shit that love will say, I know niggas who sell drugs, I know niggas who kidnap. You feel me? Lauren won't talk like that. That's why I'm saying, like, no, love's the MC's MC. And that's why she talks about, no, 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 I want respect that an MC gets. And so what we need to do for her is speak on her behalf, like the great and wonderful MC that she is, because that's what the fuck she is. This motherfucker, nice, Mike. Yeah, and, and I think that, you know, we talk about most deaf, or I do. <laughs> and the versatility and everything that he's able to add. That's a great comparison, Mike. The, the versatility that he's able to add to a track from being able to sing your hook to spit something crazy to being the whole theme of it. Like, mm -hmm. she can mm -hmm. add so much to anybody's mm -hmm. tracks and her own. Like, she could stand alone because she can do it all. And then, right. I, but I think that, you know, the answer to, well, the way I would answer the question that, I ask you about, you know, the notoriety thing, because she's all over the place and she's working. I think that I would love to pair her up with, like, I mean, I don't know if Black Thought's working on a project or anything, but she do a hook and a verse alongside with somebody like a Black Thought, and people can hear I think they can make a dope record together. Just putting that out in the atmosphere. What do you think? So if I do have a critique for her, because I'm going to be honest and fair with anything, and I'm a big, big fan of hers. I think the weakest part of her game is her hooks. And so if you're asking me what she can do, because of how versatile she is, I would say that her hook game needs to go to the level that her versatility, her versatility, subject matter, and lyricism resides, which I find to be elite. Like, her lyricism and subject matter and agility are elite, okay? Ray Realm said that uh, Love is one of the top 10 female MCs of all time, and I know she doesn't want to be called a female MC, but that's what... If we were right. having that conversation, I would agree with you right now off of that, correct. But what I'm trying to tell you is, is that <clears throat> capable to be number one on that list. That's what I keep trying... That's why I keep bringing up the Lauren conversation. It's like, no, no, no. This one right here when it's all said and done, if we're just having a conversation and going to be, you know, biased about it and tag the female side of it, this one has the capability as a woman in this sphere to be the greatest female to ever touch the mic. And so what we can do is start talking about her in that regard. Like, you know, this can be the greatest female MC to ever touch the mic, even though she may Over not Rhapsody? like it. 
I'm going to tell you something. First of all, the production side of things is where I'm going to need the people around Rhapsody to step it up to this level. Because you can ride to this. That's what I mean about it's on some MC stuff. It's not just the content and the subject matter. It's the fact that you can ride to it, too, because of the beat. And it's also because, too, she gets she also, too, will get gritty in a way that Rhapsody doesn't always does. And not to say Rhapsody don't get her hands dirty with it, but not like love. Like lo- love, love says stuff that Lil' Kim would say, but not in a sexual way, but just in a way where it hits you so strong. It's like, damn, a woman said that, but it's strong. They're asking the name of the album. The name of the album is um, Self Love 2. The fact that you don't even know. See, that's what I'm saying. That's what we can do. Like, what we're doing right now. Like, yeah. that's it. Because, like, like she's got it. Um, I'm from Carolina. I love Rap City. I would... And I told you, Eve is the best project I've ever heard a female MC put together. Just in that spectrum. Mm-hmm. From my perspective... But this is just Love doing these five and seven tracks EP. Yeah. I expect Love to eclipse Rod Digger's album and Eve and the Eve album by Rhapsody when she drops a full length major project. I expect. Well, I mean to- that full length album that she put out some years back was super dope. See how many tracks was that though, Mike? I mean, that was when a I'm lot. talking, full I want to say that was like fourteen, right? No, I don't think so. I think that was those put together, wasn't it? No, nah, hold on, I'm about to look it up right now. Because self-love, the first self-love is seven tracks. Love is love is... Yeah, love is love is what I'm talking about. Yeah, that was 10. You're right. Break Soul. uh, It just felt like it was longer than that, I guess. Yeah. That's that's what I'm trying to tell you. It's like she really hasn't done like a whole, whole player player. Like that that, that 10 is the closest she got to it, which was probably her best project, wouldn't you say? Love is love is great. Right, so she's doing these seven to ten joint projects, but it's like, oh man, when, when she drops like a twelve to fifteen joint project, that Conway is like jump behind, where it's like, no, where you're gonna hear Armani on there, you're gonna hear Conway on there, and Benny on there, and West, like, and they're gonna put it together, put it together. This is love putting it together. I'm talking about when they put it together, put it together for her. I expect it to be the best rap album a woman has ever made, and I think. Fuck all that. It can be one of the best rap albums ever. You know, when I heard her on that um, extended uh, or the deluxe of Conway's From a King to a God, I went and found who she was. Like, No, I remember when you hit me, you were like, we need to find out who this is, Coop, like, like right now. And I started digging right after you told me that because, I mean, and I'm not going to be funny when I say this, and Mike, you've said this before, it's been hard for you to get into female rappers because the content and the subject matter, right? Yeah, and you know, I'm a, I'm a certain type of hip hop listener. So, like, even when I heard um, Amani Caesar on West Side, it's like when I heard her over that hardcore shit, I was more drawn to that. Yes, you know, yes. and not a lot of female MCs take that approach in this era, you know, and that's okay. But you know, right. I, I remember when you know Foxy used to get on the you know Ashacha and shit like that. Like that's the stuff that I gravitate to. And that's what, you know, Love was doing on Conway's joint. And I was like, yo, let's check this out. LP says, Ninth Wonder's beats haven't evolved. Uh, little Brother had got away from uh, him on their third album. Even on the Fife album. Ninth album uh, sticks out for how dated it sounds. Wow, it's just going in on Ninth One. Uh, y'all must be talking about Rhapsody over there. I, that came out of nowhere. Double O Seven is like the origin of hip hop on A and E, hosted by Nas. It's coming in May. Uh, he does so much for the culture. Fifty years from now, people will realize, unlike others, who did it for them. Not <laughs> we know who the others are. Yeah, yeah I'm not touching it. I'm not touching it. <laughs> Yo, shout um, out to Nas, man. I love that whole movement, and you know, we love everything you guys do here because that's why we're documenting every single thing that goes on on these episodes because that that's important. The people no. are creating this hip hop shit. You and I I think our most frequent conversations behind the scenes are about how people are trying to rewrite history, how people have already rewritten history and how part of why we're here is to make sure that that shit don't happen in this hip hop sphere. Yeah. Um as far as and this is what I wanted to say and I wasn't trying to put you on front street too much much Mike, but I was trying to say that when you express that thought about love, 
to hear you say that, knowing you as long as I know you, and to know what your stance, and I find, and I want to say I found your stance and your take to be valid because it wasn't on some misogynistic shit, it was more on some rap shit. It's like, well, they be having the females not on some rap shit, and that's why I don't like it. That's really your stance, they right? They on the happy shit, man. Right, they be on that happy, like, over-sexualized, and I get and what you When Kim saying. dropped No Time with that, uh, that uh, what, what sample is that? But, you know, she used to be with James Brown. But yeah, when No Time dropped, I was like, yo, this shit is hard. Because it is, man. It is. Like, yeah. Now, now, as far as, like, no matter what people say, I'm not with that stuff. You know? No, no, so I get that. So you're yeah. coming from a place of talking about creatively and musically, not yeah. misogynistically. Too often when we talk about female MCs, it comes off in the misogynistic spectrum, no matter what we say. You're talking on some rap shit. So to hear you... Not hear you, but to see you send me that message, like, we need to find out who this is, Cooper. I was like, Mike's looking for a female MC? And here was my thought. That means she on some rap shit, or Mike wouldn't be <laughs> looking. And that's yeah. when I started looking. And, and, and Mike, when you told me that is when I dug up all her projects and started listening that night. And I was like, Mike, you're right. She's phenomenal. She's phenomenal. Where is she? Let's find her. Let's go. Oh, well, Conway just signed her drum over here. I was like, well, see if she wants to come on the show and talk to us, because she's fucking dope. Yeah. Yeah. I, listen, happens, I'm looking so forward we, to hearing a full length from her, and I think more people need to work with Love the Genius because I think there's so much that she can add to a, a song. She's she's different. She's very she, different. No, she's talented. I just think her hook game needs to get better. I think that's actually the only crack in her game right now. I think vocally she's there. I think mic performance is there. Lyrically is there. Content and subject matter has been there. Honesty mm-hmm. has been there. Clarity has been there. She's dope. And her and that's album what, had more content than Pusha's album to me. I mean... And it was only seven song, songs. The first two songs have more content than Pusha's album if we just don't spade a spade. Yeah, we call it what it is. And it was like, it was really refreshing to hear. I mean, from the jump, Mike, she just talked about the issues of it. But then you think about it, listen to how Conway's talking about on oh, God Don't Make Mistakes. Issues with seeing his son. Issues with dealing with alcoholism. He's still obviously traumatic. People don't understand this. Okay, so this man has been shot and almost murdered. Can you say PTSD? Because I hear the PTSD on God Don't Make Mistakes. So she's also taking cues from her mentor in a sense. It's like, oh, this dude is nice on the mic, but able to express everything and be nice on the mic. She's doing much of the same. They're taking it to the next level. And that's what it's about. Uh, Somebody asked where she's from. She's from Buffalo. Yeah. All right, well, let's get up out of here, man. Um, You guys have a great weekend. We definitely going to chop it up next week about we're going to talk about these albums again um because i'm gonna listen to it this weekend and i'm gonna see how different i feel but i don't i don't know how different i'm gonna feel i'm gonna give it some more run so i think um so listen some here's some albums we still haven't rated just to kind of leave people something Mm -hmm. um the billy album billy woods Mm -hmm. right billy woods i got that downloaded I'm getting to that. We still haven't talked uh, forever by Fife. We yeah, have. We got to talk I, about that. We, we need to talk forever about Fife. It's Fife. It's a tribe called Quest. We're yeah. a hip hop channel. At some point, we, we I know it's late, but we got to talk about Fife because yeah, it's a great. Still go album. back, yeah. Yeah, uh, Little Dirk's reloaded. Just to be fair, the seven two two zero. Hudson said, go listen to the Absol single. I did see the Absol put out a single I'm today. I'm Absol single today, too. Yeah. I didn't get a chance to listen. I uh, still need to listen to the Earl Sweatshirt to sit. Okay. But I think that'll kind of clear our plate when we get to those things. I think that's what we're behind on that we need to catch up on. Okay. All right. Well, everybody in here, man, um, we got the link to the, the digital yearbook in the description. We'll put that in the community section, too. Glad y'all are rocking with that. I'm glad we were able to put that on a digital platform, too. And, yeah, go subscribe to According to Hip Hop on YouTube. Hit the bell icon so you know when we're going live. And, yeah, we're going to keep these discussions going. Well, future next week. <laughs> now, Black Star is coming. Black Star is coming. Hold on. So, Mike, are we going, like, half on a subscription so, like, you can buy it and I'll send you money? And nah, I got I'm, it. We're, we're doing that. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I, no, I don't think people understand that it's, like, I don't like how they're playing this game, Mike. Well, we, I want to hear the music and, you know. Can we, do we, can we just two minutes? Can we two minutes on it? 
it's like I don't like how they're playing it because this is what I mean. The artists make it convenient for them when it's convenient for them. Like a lot of what's going on in the music business in the hip hop world, in terms of the availability and just like the public running it and owning it, these guys actually do have something to do with it. And so I understand the nostalgic moment and the feel, but it's like you're involved in the music industry. Yeah. You're involved in the music industry. Yeah. Like Talib pulled up on our Instagram page. Stop acting like you guys can't like pull up and do like you y'all y'all know how to reach out to people. Y'all know how to make things shake and make things happen. Y'all have industry connections. Stop making it seem like y'all are like walking around like in some brown like hooded monk uniform with a torch in a cane. Like like that's not y'all. Like y'all not that. Like like Talib's a media personality. I keep trying to tell you, most played this game for a very long time. Okay. And so, like, bring the shit back out and give it to the people the way you gave it to the people originally because the way that you gave it to the people was more classic than the music that you gave. The way that it was given to the people is more classic than the, than the album is. That's what I keep saying. Y'all talking about the movement. Y'all talking about the feeling. Y'all talking about the impact. Y'all not talking about the music. But since y'all not doing this shit, the motherfucking music better be there since everybody got to pay for it to play this game. Like, you ho. You feel me? You niggas not hoe. <laughs> Jigga man. Hope. That's a Jigga man move, definitely. Is it not a J move? But the, but but they get but they get branded as some sort of torchbearer. That's why I keep bringing up most death in the changed clothes video, Mike. And you like, no. Nah. <laughs> I'm like, no. Nah. That was 20 <laughs> years ago, man. Mike, Mike, it's still Brooklyn niggas. It's still, still Brooklyn, Brooklyn niggas. niggas. I think that's irrelevant. <laughs> I mean, like, still, not, that's still, not irrelevant. That is actually relevant. I'll give you like, that. Like, they still Brooklyn they niggas. They still Brooklyn. Like, no, they gonna play and the shout game. out to Brooklyn and all my Brooklyn niggas. Shout out to Jar out there. You know what time it is. That's what I'm saying.